Have you ever looked at some code and thought, wow, that code really sucks. And then you look a bit closer and you realize that you're the one that wrote that code. Had to steal my game up when you bring my name up, they gon' say I came up. The delegate design pattern is one of the most important design patterns to know as an iOS developer. So in this video, I want to go over what the delegate design pattern is, how you can use it, and how you can implement it in your own code. I have an app here that has a secret message, and in order to see that message, you have to first enter a passcode into this view controller and hit enter. And if you get the passcode correct, you get to see the secret message. So this app has two view controllers, the initial view controller with the button and the message, and then the passcode view controller that manages entering the passcode. And in code, it looks like this. The initial view controller doesn't have much going on. It just checks if the passcode coming back from the other one is correct. And in the passcode view controller, we've got a reference to the root view controller and every time the user enters that enter button, we are calling the entered passcode method on that view controller and passing in the code. So it's a pretty basic setup here. But this property right here in the passcode view controller tightly couples this part of the application to the root view controller. And this is bad for a few reasons. First of all, it makes this bit of code much less reusable. I can't take this passcode view controller and use it anywhere in my application other than when it's being used from the root view controller. It can also lead to a lot of issues if developers aren't careful, they can call any method on the root view controller from within this class, which could lead to issues down the road. It also makes refactoring more difficult because one change to one class might affect the other class, and it also makes testing really difficult. So generally speaking, when we're writing code in different parts of our application, we want to keep those parts of our application completely separate from each other if we can. So this passcode view controller really doesn't need to know about the rest of the application. It just needs to know about entering passcodes. So we shouldn't tightly couple it to the other parts of the application. We shouldn't make it dependent on the other parts of our application. Limiting the amount of unnecessary dependencies leads to cleaner code that's easier to refactor, easier to test, and just generally contains less bugs. So how do I remove this dependency on the root view controller while still allowing my passcode view controller to communicate the passcode back to the root view controller. And this is where the delegate design pattern comes in. It's a communication pattern that allows two objects to communicate with each other without having any of these unnecessary dependencies. So let me show you. So we start by creating a protocol that has the same name as the class that is implementing this pattern with the word delegate on the end. And this pattern really only makes sense if we're dealing with reference types, not value types. Then we create any methods that we want the delegate to implement so that we can call those methods to communicate any information. So in this case, the view controller is going to be the delegate. So if it implements this method, it will be able to get the code from this class. And then down here, when the user actually taps enter, we're going to call this method right here on the delegate, whatever object that is, and pass in the labels text. And usually the delegate methods are named in this kind of convention so that we can pass in the object that's actually calling the method, in this case, self, in case that information is useful on the other end. For example, if the view controller was using multiple passcode view controllers, it would be able to distinguish between them. And then the property is usually just named delegate and the type is the protocol that we created. And this is generally how we'll set up a delegate pattern. Now I could put this protocol in a different file, but usually I put it in the same file to begin with while I'm working with the code and then later on move it into a different file. Then in the root view controller, when the passcode view controller is about to be presented, we set this view controller as its delegate. And this is how it usually looks. And that means that this view controller now needs to conform to the passcode view controller delegate. And I could have done this in the class definition, but it's a swift convention to use an extension for conforming to protocols. So I've done it down here, and that means I have to implement the method from the protocol, which I'm doing right here, and then the rest of the logic is exactly the same. So this app works in the exact same way, 
that it did before. I can show the message, enter the code, and then I see the secret message. But the real benefit here can be seen when we're just taking a look at the passcode view controller. So from the perspective of this view controller, from the perspective of this piece of code, it's impossible to get any other information about this application. This class knows nothing about our app. In fact, we could take all of this code as it is, take it out of our application, put it into a library, and then reuse that library in literally any iOS application. And this is the kind of code we wanna to strive to write in our applications. Things that are so independent, so decoupled, that we could literally put them into a library and reuse them. And this just makes everything cleaner and easier to test and you'll have much less bugs in your code. And right now I've done a very simple implementation. I've just got one single method that is communicating data out of this class. But I could have many methods in here communicating data and you can also have the delegate ask for data from the other object, from the delegate object. And we can do that just by having a return value on these functions. So if I say this function requires a return value that is a Boolean value, then in my view controller that is the delegate, I'll have to now return true or false. And I could use this value to determine if the user actually entered the correct passcode or not, and then do something on the passcode view controller side. So uh, if it's correct, I'll return true, and otherwise I'll return false. So then over here, when I'm calling the delegate method, I know that that object, the delegate object, is gonna return true if the code is correct and return false if it's incorrect. So I'll just wrap this in an if statement. And then if the user gets the code correct, I'm just gonna do this hug emoji. And if they get it incorrect, I'm gonna show a poop emoji. So now if I refresh this and I enter an incorrect passcode, maybe just one, two, I get that poop emoji up there because what's happening is when I hit enter, we're calling this method, which goes to the delegate object, gives it the code, and the delegate object will return false because it's the incorrect code. If we get false back, we're gonna set the labels text to be the poop emoji. If, uh, let's clear this, if we get it correct, then it'll be the hug emoji and it will go away and then we get to see the secret message. So the data can be passed both ways. If we wanna send data out, we pass it as a parameter in the method. And if we wanna get data back, then it's a return value on the method. This is a very basic implementation of the delegate design pattern in a custom piece of code. But this pattern is used everywhere in iOS frameworks. And I'll show you a quick example. I've just added a text field to this first view controller. And if I tap on this, by default, I'll get a keyboard and I can start entering in some text here. And what I probably want to happen is when I hit this return key, I want the keyboard to go away and I'll want to take that text and do something with it. So currently when I hit the return key, nothing happens. And this is the default behavior in an iOS app. Um, I mean, if I were to enter a word like Sam, see that it's lowercase, I hit return, it turns to uppercase, so something can happen. But the keyboard doesn't go away and I can't use this value and I can't get notified that the return key was hit. So in order to actually do this, in order to actually implement that behavior, we need to conform to the UI text field delegate protocol and then set this UI text field delegate to be the view controller in this case. So in my view controller, I'm conforming to the UI text field delegate protocol. And that means that I can implement this method text field should return. And this will get called anytime I hit the return key on the keyboard when it's being used for that text field. And then it requires you to return a Boolean value, true if you want default behavior to continue. So if I hit enter, Sam should still get capitalized and any other default behavior like that. And if I return false, it means don't do anything. I'm just gonna completely take over. So I'm gonna return true here. And then I'm just gonna print out the text that currently appears in that keyboard. So if I go back to my main storyboard now, I can set this delegate programmatically, or I can right click and drag from the object into the view controller. And then one of the outlets there is actually the delegate. So that's a pretty easy way when we're working in Interface Builder to set up the delegate between a UI object and a view controller. So now if I run this and I enter some text, I'm just gonna enter Sam again and hit return. I can see the word Sam gets printed out. 
Uh, and if I enter anything else in, hello, that will also get printed out. So this works pretty well. The final thing I want to do is just dismiss that keyboard. So if I go back into the view controller, into that method, uh, I can say text field resign first responder, which means text field get rid of your keyboard. Text. The delegate design pattern is one of the most useful design patterns to know as an iOS developer. It's used in pretty much every framework provided by Apple, and it's something that you're expected to know how to use and how to implement. But don't worry about mastering this pattern right now. You'll get plenty of practice as you use the different frameworks within the iOS ecosystem. So just stay tuned for more videos on iOS development.